you mentioned Bob about uh, Pat Page and Davenport because you, that's the next place you went to, weren't it, Wayne? Yeah. And and you met Pat for the first time. Yeah. Well, no, okay. Kev, Pat, you you that was what it was. Uh, Pat Page had got you into magic, in effect, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. On that school trip, it was bef- yeah. I was, Before Roy, yeah. Oh yeah, this was oh, when yeah. I was just thinking it was face in the book. Yeah. You were about 13, 14? 14. I went on a school trip to London and uh, we parked in Great Russell Street. Right. And everybody went off to the uh, museum and I sneaked into Dampo. <laughs> and there was somebody there performing Top of Some Balls. Right. Well, I didn't know at the time it was Pat Page, and they did cut some ball and right? they, they then produced the orange apple and potato. And I went to him, how did you do that? He leaned over and went very well. I went, I can never do that. And he gave me the booklet. Oh. It was about a pound, I think. Which booklet? Do you remember it? I can't remember. Was it the Divernon one? No, it was... No. Actually, it was more basic than that, wasn't it? It was more basic than that. It's yeah. a Ferelli or someone like that. It was cheap. Yeah. And I thought, that's cheap for the cups. And he went, no, you don't get the cups. <laughs> go, go and practice with paper balls. And tea cups, yeah. Wow. Yeah. He made this he made the balls out of bread. Did he? Yeah, he would get a an old a, a bit of um, it had to be sliced bread. Yeah. And he uh, nip a, a lump out of the bread, rolled it around in a ball, and yeah. after about half a day it would go hard. Yeah, all right. He yeah. Would do a routine with tea cups and the and the uh, That's such ball. a good idea. Right. And then he I want to know because it would never happen today. In fact, it would probably start World War Three. How the hell you weren't missed at the school trip? <laughs> no, there's a map. Not sure. <laughs> there was about four tellers. Yeah. It wouldn't. It wouldn't happen today. They would. They no. would break down if one child went missing. Yeah. A nationwide search. Absolutely. When they came out of the museum, I just came out of the shop and joined the queue. <laughs> so what, you're just keeping an eye on the museum and just yeah. see if they were coming out? Yeah, because back in that, in them days, well, even up till the 90s, that was the only place in and out of the museum, wasn't it? They didn't have yeah. any of these side entrance. But I remember uh, Davenport's being everything I thought it would be. Yeah. It was dirty and musty and all boxes and everything. Yeah. Didn't you didn't you get a trick there which you went on to close your act with? Wasn't that a, a real that, simple little thing? It was the vanishing cigarette. Oh uh, that's right. But the, the the early version with the pole. Right. Yeah. Well with I the tube that. with the tube pull that yeah. Yeah. Do you get from most joke shops now? Yeah. With a lit cigarette. Wow. It, yeah. It, to think it, that you, you closed acts all over the world with the closed yeah. on that vanishing cigarette, didn't you? Different method, but yeah. He also uh, uh, yeah the, tell them about how you, what you did at school when you had the vanishing cigarette. Yeah, in the toilet in Bray time, I got my mate's cigarette and vanished it in front of everybody. And when they all went out the toilet, I had to reset, so I had half a cigarette. So I used to use a smoke it, yeah. It's great, wasn't it? Um, me. So that was that the first taste of an audience? That was the first? Yeah. Yeah. You liked it. Obviously, you liked the adulation. Yeah, I liked getting the attention, yeah. Now you have been given your own TV series. 
and we come full circle again back to Pat Page. Now, how mm. did Pat Page become your advisor? It was just a natural choice. Right. I needed an advisor for my TV show. And I thought of Pat immediately. Right. As, as well as Ross Stevens. Yep. Who was my illusion advisor. Yeah. But Pat yeah. was like an encyclopedia, wasn't he? He was just... He was brilliant. He had six methods for every... Every trick, and he used to fry my brain so badly with things I already knew. Yeah, oh, he's done it to us all. I think he did it to us all. I mean, I remember going to a Magic Circle Dealers Day once, and uh, he was doing stuff with a uh, Devil's Hank, mm. and and you're sitting there thinking. Well, it can't be a devil's hang because you can't do what he's doing. And and he was. It was just mental. He was my favourite lecturer ever. He just, oh, yeah, some he'd of the have stuff. Nothing. He'd have nothing. He'd mm. have a ping pong ball and a few coins, deck of cards, a couple of silks, and he'd do an hour of lecture. And he was his knowledge was just unbelievable. Yeah, I know. And he could do it all as well, couldn't he? His, yeah. his lecture on fun tips was probably... Oh, yeah. The, best yeah. you know how did why did you need a magic advisor um i just felt like i needed somebody to bounce off and have a think tank because you didn't just do dealer stuff did you you didn't just buy a no, trick no yeah. i i did mostly classics i would say yeah so how did you work together? Um, it was fun. It was 24 hours a day. Day with a, a master of knowledge. On the side of me, I used to do stuff and he'd go, try it this way and try it and then maybe it was bad. Maybe not, but it was great bad because he criticised what you did, but he would always give you an alternative method as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, standing beside me, we have a very charming gentleman that's come an awful long ways to this performance. He's from Scotland, the wee laddie from Scotland. Would you please welcome Mr. Patrick Page? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what, what I'm going to show you is that one or two little magic tricks right close up under your noses. Normally, you see them on television, on the stage, or nightclubs, but I'm going to show you a couple of tricks. Right up close. And we like to come right in close, dear, because you're nearest. <laughs> now, this is a little bat. You know, you know what a bat is. They play cricket in England. But this is not an English bat, it's a Scottish one. It's actually made from the wood from a haggis tree. <laughs> you know what a haggis is, don't you? You know what a haggis is, don't you? No. Oh, uh, pardon? No. You don't? Oh, it's, it's a little animal. Uh, they don't grow on trees. I didn't mean that. <laughs> no, they nest in them. You okay. know, yeah. And they, this bat's made from one of the, But apart from that, would you like to hold your hand out, please? Because I've got a little box here. Now hold your hand up flat, that's good. I've got a little box here, and I'm going to sit it on your hand there. Now don't move it, wait a minute, I'll take the lid off. Now if you look inside that box, you'll see lots of little black spots. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. Thank God for that. Because <laughs> <laughs> this little bat here has got three white spots on either side. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to wet the tip of my finger. I'm going to pick up one of these little black spots. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pop it underneath on the other side. Okay. You don't believe that, do you? Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I'm going to take another one, another one of these little black spots, you see. Mm -hmm. This one I'll pop right on the top there where you can see it. See? I saw that. You saw that, <laughs> yes. So we've now got a black spot on the top and we've got a black spot on the bottom. You understand that? Mm -hmm. All right, look, if I take another little black spot out like that, and this one I'm going to pop underneath. Mm -hmm. So we should now have two black spots underneath. Is that right? Right. 
right. You're not sure. Look, I'll turn it over. You see, we've got right. two black spots underneath. If I take another one, put that one underneath, we should have two black spots on the top and two black spots underneath. Mm -hmm. Is that right? <laughs> so we'll take still another one and we'll pop that one on the top there. See? We'll take the last one and pop that one underneath. So we've got three black spots on the top and we've got three black spots underneath. But some people don't bla like black spots. So if you don't like black spots, you shake them all back into the box. Oh, don't <laughs> spill them, don't spill them. So you're left with three white spots on either side of the bat. So, you know, it's the only bat I've got from the haggis tree. You see? And I can't give you that, but I've got millions of these little boxes of spots. So if you just keep that, keep it as a souvenir, put it in your pocket, and you can all applaud now. Tell me, young man, do you know what that is? Yeah, it's a sponge ball. A sponge ball. It's a ball made out of sponge, but it's a particular type of sponge ball. So if you take it and pull it, you get two sponge balls. <laughs> okay. So we've now actually got two sponge balls. Would you like to hold both your hands out flat, please? That's good. Nice, long, slim hands. You're not a pianist, are you? A violinist? Oh, you've got musician's hands there. Hold them nice and steady, because I'm going to put one of those balls in this hand. I want you to hang on to this one very, very tight. Hold it tight. That's good, because my one is actually going to disappear. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you still have your one? Yep. Are you sure? Yep. Would you like to open your hand very slowly? Very slowly. Yeah, you've got my one as well, haven't you? Okay. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Can you count up to ten? Yep. Slowly, with me, in unison. That means together. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Starting now. Are you ready? Here we go. One. one. And you can look at the two balls on the table while you're doing it. Are you ready? One. one. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. ten. Did you like that? <laughs> <laughs> you look worried. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll put one of the balls in my pocket and I'll put one of them in my hand. Tell me, how many is in my hand? One. One. Are you sure about that? No. No. <laughs> well, if you're not sure there's one, how many do you think there could be? Two. Could be two. But you think there's one? Yep. Well, let's start again, eh? <laughs> We've got three balls here. I'm going to put one of them in my pocket. I'm going to put one of them in my hand. I'll put one of them in my pocket. Okay? Mm. How many do I have in my hand this time? Two. Two. Let's start again, eh? You hold your hand out. There's two there. Will you like to hang on to both of them very, very tightly? I'm going to put this one in my pocket. How many do you have in your hand? Two. Two. You sure? Yeah. All right. Turn your other hand over like that. Put it on the table and open it slowly. Oh, you got three, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. Last time, we got three balls there. Yes? Yeah. I'm going to put one of them in my pocket. I'll put one of them in my hand. I'll put one of them in my pocket. How many do you think's in my hand this time? One. One. Would you like to hold your hand out? You've got the same amount as me, haven't you? But thank you very much indeed anyway for helping, young man. You did that beautifully. <laughs>